Hiya, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hini. I am an astrologer and tarot reader. Happy Saturn day and good morning from the UK. Hope everyone is keeping well and that Scorpio season continues to be um, interesting for you. And today we're going to talk about today, which is the full moon officially in Taurus, October 31st, 2020. Um, so get yourself a nice drink, some tea, Mm, I've got some lovely green tea here. It's very rainy today outside. So first of all, what is a full moon? Just in case we don't know, there are some basic things about every full moon that is useful to keep in mind. And one of the key words for full moons is culmination because they are moments of culmination. It's like this cup here. It's like full to the brim. It's about to overflow. Tipping points springing out, explosions, eruptions. Depending on the sign that the particular full moon is, gives us more of an idea about the flavor of that sort of explosion or culmination. And depending on the house that you have this full moon in, gives you an inkling as to the themes that that sort of eruption is about. Okay, where it's coming from, or even where it's going towards, or what themes it's going to interact with and by looking at your natal chart you can actually see if you have any natal planets that are conjunct this full moon and then it's going to affect you even more and it's going to be like the moon plus the other planet or planets in your natal chart they're kind of coming together in this eruption or culmination moment full moons are also about release or relief. The moon is very often associated with emotions and so that can be in the emotional sense. So just releasing something or letting go of something um, that is emotionally beneficial for you or even if it's mm, traumatic at the time or uncomfortable at the time it's still a letting go, a release sort of moment. And for others the full moon can mark relief. So just feeling thankful inside, privately, relieved emotionally for some reason. And the moon of course is the luminary, the planet of reflection. And so around every full moon there can be these experiences that we have where deep down inside or in private we are reflecting more on things or more deeply. Or we're even getting more intuitive downloads, we're learning more through emotional intelligence. It's much more intensified, it could even feel much heavier reflection on all these things that you are downloading or receiving. What I also notice around some full moons, uh, especially with myself, like overeating, this might be more relevant to you if you're actually cancer rising or you're very cancerian, um, so you're really pulled by the movements of the moon, but like overeating um, or just feeling cravings or feeling ravenous. And uh, when I used to work in restaurants, I would notice around the full moon, people getting more demanding um, about their food. And again, the sign that the moon is in is going to color the flavor of this demanding sort of energy. So if it's in Virgo, for example, people could get much more picky and critical <laughs> about what they're eating um, and get more stomach aches and neurosis and, and shit like that. Uh, but more generally, it is like ravenous feelings, eating more, um, consuming more as well, just more broadly. And then a lot of people do report on or around the full moon that moods are sort of accentuated or that agitation is on the increase. So if you're a Taurus sun or if you're a Taurus rising, every time there's a full moon in your sign or in your first house, you people in particular are most likely going to feel the effects of the full moon or they're going to be more intense for you or more meaningful for you. But for everyone, you should check where you have eight degrees of Taurus in your birth chart because this is where the full moon is occurring right now officially um so you can check that specific degree but you can also check the sort of two week build up to that degree and the two week period after that degree and also i want to say especially if you have any placements on eight degrees of scorpio or eight degrees aquarius or eight degrees leo so that's all the other fixed signs but in particular it's going to really affect the taurians and the scorpios uh, Scorpio risings and people with pl planets um, on or around eight degrees of Scorpio especially. And of course check the house 
in your breath chart that this full moon is occurring in because this is going to give you clues as to the themes so what is this full moon about thematically for me is it in my first house so then is it going to be about my my body and, and just me myself and i personally or is it going to be about like my world view is it going to be about my aura stuff like that if it's in your seventh house maybe it's going to be about your partner or an open enemy maybe it's going to be about a business partner if it's in your 12th house it could be something very very profound and, and could even involve for some people an undoing of some sort it could have big connections to your dreams and the dreamscape and meditation and things like that and i do want to say that the full moon date so october 31st is not always like exact it doesn't mean that on this day exactly you're gonna suddenly feel these full moon and taurus vibes no it can be up to a two week uh, period before so the build up and also the two week up to two weeks after the full moon the sort of when it starts to fizzle out gradually as we get the build up to the new moon and i will advise you to check out my recent november astrology for 2020 video where i do mention the full moon uh, and the sort of early november transit especially might be of interest to you to check out um, because early November was still riding very much the fallout of the full moon in Taurus and of course if you would like to book any type of astrological tower reading with me breath chart reading you can look at the details below and get in touch you can go to hinihigh.com and check out my services and testimonials from other clients and see what I'm all about and um, I hope to hear from you soon and it would be great to uh, help you or to read for you so let's talk about Taurus then first so Taurus um, gives us a clue about the flavor again right of this full moon and a key word then is going to be indulgence that's a big keyword so indulgence again you might have been feeling indulgent in the build-up to this full moon or it might be triggered exactly on or it might start to creep in after a little bit for you also I feel like a lot of us are gonna feel very deeply um, very privately satisfied somehow because Taurus is about satisfaction okay and being like simply um, satisfied sometimes carnally satisfied but it's generally satisfaction so I feel like a lot of us are gonna feel this and remember um, or if you don't know Taurus is actually the sign that the moon is said to be exalted so the moon loves to be in this sign the most and so i think generally for most of us this full moon can so easily be a great experience can so easily be worked with these energies can be so favorable but remember that keyword indulgence and that we can of course go overboard taurus is also about sensuality and so this full moon can bring for us lots of these sensual experiences so taurus is a sign of the senses um especially the five literal senses. Um, so you could find that doing things like getting a massage, having a nice mm, bath, bubbles, candles, um, or immersing yourself in some really nice music or some really undisturbed, simple um, healing sort of audio experience, um, or having really nice sensual sex, um, or loving yourself really sensually around the full moon. You might find that even it wasn't intentional, but you just ended up doing something really sensual that was very satisfying. It might have been indulgent, um, you know, even like things like chocolate, buying <laughs> chocolate ice cream, but it's like probably high quality stuff as well. This indulgence is quality and quite likely related to food. Not always, but Taurus is very often associated to with food more broadly it's about taste good taste and, and good sense as well so it could even be like visual things like like allowing yourself around the full moon to dive visually into a good film a good drama a good play um or even the food itself you really experience highly the visuals of the food that you are making or that is made for you and taking lots of photographs of your food and sharing it um, it could be a great time also to to celebrate you and your body uh, visually so through photographs um, through social media through celebrating the simple um, sensuality of yourself as well this full moon in Taurus I think is also going to bring for a lot of us or has already brought 
uh, real letting go. So remember I said at the beginning that full moons are about mm, release a lot of the time. And so Taurus is also about reality and what just makes sense and what things just are. In combination, then we get really, some people are really going to let go of shiz around about now. And that can be a million different things, but it's like just really letting go. And also, I think this really ties into admission because we're in Scorpio season. So it's a lot about truth still. And so I feel like a lot of people are finally letting go of things or people or ideas and um, habits, uh, especially if it involves a rut of some kind because Taurus does deal with ruts and stagnations and so I feel like a lot of us will finally be letting go and admitting that we were always kind of lying to ourselves a little bit especially in Libra season it might have really started to peak then because Libra season is when we start to question our relationships to people and to things and then Scorpio season is where we really plunge right into that you better intensely do something about that and cut um or, or otherwise commit also for some of you compare what you committed to around about six months ago so in Taurus season of this year 2020 was there anything that you like committed to that might have been superficial or materialistic or just even lazy <laughs> something or someone that you just kind of went with flow wise or you just sort of stayed with and now that's probably what you're letting go of the full moon in Taurus can also bring us stubborn retaliations because Taurus is a fixed earth sign and this does therefore deal with stubbornness and it can be things to do with your possessions your money your values even your talent even and so there could be this is of course where the full moon doesn't work well for us so we could retaliate in stubborn ways. I don't think for the most part this is going to affect people because again the moon is exalted in Taurus but it could for some people in some cases in some places it could um, be like more of stubborn retaliation time so just keep that in mind beware of that and also more generally resistance so really continuing to resist out of emotional exasperation because the full moon can be this moment of emotional exasperation so be careful that you're not just mm, continuing some sort of resistance out of this emotional moment when you might actually benefit from letting go. I feel like a lot of us also around this full moon in Taurus are going to finally be feeling our talent, finally feeling the qualities within ourselves, finally feeling our values as well, and finally feeling, because again, this is feeling uh, the moon, this is emotional reflection or intelligent, emotionally intelligent reflection and reception, the moon. And it's in Taurus, so it's about talents and values and sense. So especially those of us who have struggled with self-esteem, it could be a great full moon where we finally get this self-esteem sort of culmination or tipping point where we refuse uh, any longer to be treated like this sort of bull um, being taunted by the matador. Like we want to actually now gore the matador okay <laughs> and, and and be done with it so let's then talk about uranus shall we and uranus is as i said before conjunct this full moon in taurus uranus has been retrograde in taurus in this fixed earth sign since august and that was i think august 15th around august 15th of this year 2020 and this retrograde is going to continue until January 2021, around the 14th, 15th of January. This is like, mm, this is gonna be, for some of us, surprise retaliations and surprise realizations and surprise getting out of rut sort of actions and surprise, mm, um, just surprise like, yeah, realizations and reflections. And although it's surprising, remember that Uranus is retrograde still. So Uranus is not like, as powerful as I think we might think right now and it's also in Taurus <laughs> a sign that doesn't necessarily get associated so quickly with revolution or with progression um, that as Uranus is so keep that in mind it might be something surprising but it's something that is like slower something that is more gradual but still kind of surprising um, it might be something also that you kind of keep a bit to yourself as well this change of yours or this big release or reversal and I do therefore want to talk about reversals 
again, so reversing decisions during this full moon. Some of you will be reversing your decisions about something that just wasn't true again. So it's retrograde, Uranus retrograde. So going back on previous things that you thought were progressive, but actually weren't, or actually you're finding, you're feeling, you're emotionally reflecting that they're not, they weren't. And so you're going back actually on that progression. This again could have been something that was always there, like sitting and kind of bubbling up in Scorpio season as well. In combination with this full moon in Taurus has really marked this moment where you just admit to yourself, you're just true to yourself about something. And it's okay sometimes to go back on a decision, it's fine, um, if it's right for you. Others of us now are gonna be feeling at peace with regression, especially in the context of this pandemic. Those of us in lockdown, I think for a lot of us, there's more of a feeling at peace, as possible as that is, but like a feeling of peace. Um, it's not perfect, of course, but feelings of peace with regression and standstill as well. So being kind of more okay with standstill and embracing more of this Taurian Queen of Pentacles sort of just waiting game type of energy and <laughs> channeling Taurus time. Uh, for a long time, we're gonna be doing this. We're channeling Taurus time, which is like only moving when it actually smells right to do so or looks basically right to do so and not trying to get too like mm, risky in situations where it just doesn't smell right. And um, so I think we're more comfortable with that around about now with this full moon. We're just fine with being stood still for a bit because we know that there's Taurus time now and that things Scorpio season as well teaches us this actually, this spider type of patience, this snake patience. Um, and, and sometimes even like this, the spiritual starvation and fasting that we go through until it's time to actually eat spiritually, until it's time to actually consume, to actually go out and strike. So all of that is really combining with this full moon in Taurus. Some of us though are going to engage in some sort of stubborn repetition with Uranus here and repetition of like unprogressive things. So be careful that you're not like repeating something that didn't work that you thought was progressive but you're being stubborn and you're just doing it again so be careful because it probably won't work again and more generally a lot of us around about now are just going to be relaxing more and like taking a break from trying to force breakthroughs because uranus is retrograde here really slowed down and the moon is exalted so we're allowing ourselves to be in our feelings to relax take breaks and and just to accept again taurus time. We are around this moon going to be throwing out um, backward things, backward people, backward ideas more readily. Again, it's kind of like the Taurus energy, this bull um, who's kind of done with the matador at this point. And, but it has something to do as well with something that's really regressive or not progressing you at all and so you're okay with just throwing it out the window or throwing it in the bin and that could be items could be a relationship it could be um, some sort of idea or philosophy you had that just wasn't true <laughs> which was very superficial and so you're throwing it away so that's kind of all i have for this little video on the full moon in taurus i hope you have a grand one please share in the comments how your full moon taurus in Taurus experience is going. My name is Hini. Um, have a lovely Saturn day and a fab weekend. I'll catch you very soon in the next one. Take care.